Welcome to Sold 100 TV. Hello and welcome to Sold 100 Real Estate TV. This is a real estate talk show where we answer a lot of your questions on reality and what's going on in the real estate market. My name is Billy Okoye. I'm the broker owner for Sold 100 Real Estate. I've uh, been in the business for 19 plus years. I think I've got a few experience to, you know, properly answer your questions. And today we do have uh, with us uh, one of the top mortgage lenders in the industry and he's been in the business for a long time also and um, you know he's very busy schedule he had agreed to share his day today and um, kind of throw some answers to all the questions that our viewers has got so at this point i'm going to let him introduce himself and um, so we can dive right in hi uh, my name is steve harper uh, i'm with first home mortgage in the bethesda maryland branch i've been in the mortgage business for 30 plus years and uh, am married and been married for over 30 years as well. Have three grown children and one grandchild. Uh, I'm a big uh, Commander's uh, fan. Uh, it's been kind of tough being a Commander's fan over the last 30 years, but I'm sticking in with them. Um, and I love to travel and uh, enjoy the mortgage business. Awesome. So um, I'm glad, I'm glad. I do love football also, um, just like in the other part of the world, you know, football is called soccer. You know, but um, that we'll go and discuss that for another game. But um, so, congratulations on uh, you guys are starting good uh, this year. I think that uh, the game is going well. Uh, but we had put out questions on our viewers of you know tested in and called in, and, and one of the questions that our viewers are asking because you know how we get these questions, we we'll let them to a survey. They text in their questions. They call it in. They you know, we kind of joke with them that they can zell in their questions. The one that's come top, top of the line is the interest rate in the market. You know, everybody's looking at the markets changing and all of that, but the question that is top out there is the interest rate. You know, can, can you talk a little bit on, on why interest rate is high and, and is it a great time for buyers to mm -hmm. So, um, like I mentioned, I've been in the mortgage business for over 30 years. And this is one of the most challenging market that we've been in due mm. to uh, rates going up yep. and uh, limited inventory of homes. And so people are kind of questioning, should I buy a house or not? You know, mm. is this a good time? Do I jump in or uh, under the economic situation that we're in right now? Right. And I say yes. I mean, because you never know what's going to happen down in the future. Rates may continue to go up. Yes. And yes. the big benefits of owning a house are, one, uh, pride of home ownership. I mean, owning your own home, that's a good thing. You're more likely to cut the grass and things like yeah, that. Yeah, right, know? right, right. S second, uh, uh, it's historically owning a home has been a great investment because house prices appreciate in value. And uh, last year is a great example of that. I've refinanced people who in one year have made $40,000 in one year in and the value of their house. Mm. How long would it take you to save $40,000 from your paycheck? That's, you know, so that's why home appreciation is how you build wealth. Absolutely. And, um, and so the last thing is that there aren't many um, tax benefits, tax write-offs anymore. And being able to write off mortgage interest on a mortgage loan is a great way to save money at tax time as well. Awesome. So with the, with the market, um, would we rightly to say that we're leaving the seller's market and transferring over to the buyer's market. Um, do you still see mortgage applications higher or is it taking a, is it coming low, the mortgage applications? It's, it's, a, it's lower applications now. Uh, houses are staying on the market longer. Sellers are starting to pay closing costs again for yeah, buyers. Correct. And so uh, if you're buying a house, it's kind of flip-flopped a little bit. It used to be a seller's market. There was these crazy offers way over the listing price and so forth. And now it's kind of turned to a buyer's market. So if you're a first-time buyer and this is going to be your primary residence, you can get more help from the seller. You don't have to pay over the list price to get the house. Uh, we have all sorts of loan programs to get yep. you into the property with less money, lower interest rates. So if you're a buyer, I think it's a great time because of the change in the market. Great. And, and, and I'm glad that you mentioned um, getting seller's help because um, I did, there's a buyer that we took out um, last week and whereas we would have waived home inspection, for him, we got home inspection, we got seller paying 
3% closing help, um, you know, it greatly helped the buyer to get out the fence and, and get their loan approved. Mm -hmm. and, and I think they're closing next week. You know, so that's that's a great incentive other than waiving home inspection and waiving seller help. Yeah. But now in this market, we're seeing seller help. I'm, a lot of people that I had pre-approved in the past, they couldn't get under contract because there were like seven or ten offers on a house and sellers weren't paying any closing. They, you had to pay above the list price like I'd mentioned. They didn't really have the money to do that because we could only lend on the appraised value or the sales price, whichever's less. Mm. And so I had a lot of people just say, I'm holding off. Now I hope those people should get back in yes. because things have changed. Yes. Uh, interest rates have gone up a little bit, which is affects us how much they can afford. But because it's now more of a buyer's market, I think it's a great time to jump back in. So our advice then is for all those buyers who couldn't buy in the last eight months, six months, it's time for them to all come back in now and jump in the market and take advantage of what's going on in the market. I, I think so. I think that'd be a good thing to do if they're interested, still interested in buying a house. Okay. So awesome. Another thing you had mentioned now, it's, um, you know, buyers, you know, what what happens when appraisal come in lower? I mean, you guys are saying this, appraisal go out and uh, the numbers come in lower. Mm -hmm. um, in our last segment, one of the questions was, should we kill the deal? Should we walk away from the transaction? Do you, how do you guys handle it in the mortgage industry when the appraisal come in lower than the contract price? Well, in a seller's market, if the appraisal came in low, like we were, you know, several months ago, um, the buyer would, the seller would just say, hey, I'll sell the house to somebody else if you don't want to buy over the sales <laughs> price. And so at that point, the buyer had the, bill, had the, you know, the options to pay more for the house than it's actually worth and stay under contract and just come up and be, you know, okay with buying a house for more than it's worth. Or uh, they could ask the seller to drop the price. Well, the seller's not going to drop the price because they have nine other people in line trying to buy the house. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now, uh, if the house comes in lower than the, if the value of the house comes in lower than the sales price, yes. more sellers are willing to drop the price because they don't have that line of people trying to buy the home. And so it's good for the buyer because they get the house for a less price. Correct. Um, and uh, so again, that's, that's why we're in kind of a buyer's market. Okay, awesome. Um, so another thing that does shake the buyers and they ask this question is, um, so if, if, say for instance, uh, they're under contract and the home inspection and they don't like, the seller refuses to make a repair on the home inspection, can buyer walk away on the real estate side, will, you know, negotiate with the buyers, with the listing agent to have XYZ repaired. If the seller refuses to make those repairs, would the buyer get their earnest money deposit back? If, if it's in the contract that the uh, uh, contract is contingent upon a favorable home inspection, they would get their money back if the seller doesn't do the repairs. Okay. All right. And then um, one of the last questions is, um, would, the, would the lenders help when, you know, buying the rate down for the buyers? Mm -hmm. Is this something that we see that lenders, what, what, on what ways will lenders assist the buyers um, to get in their DTI, debt to income ratio down. Sure. Um, so um, there's a program that I used to use all the time about 15 years ago. It's called a 2-1 buy down. And the way that works is that uh, the buyer or the seller or the lender can help to pay what's called the buy down charge to buy mm -hmm. the rate down the first two years. Okay. So uh, an example of a buy down would be like, four and a quarter percent the first year rate, that's what their payment's based on. Okay. The second year rate would be at five and a quarter percent. And then from years three through 30, it's six and a quarter percent. Well, that's ideal program for someone who uh, is not on a fixed income. Hopefully their income will be going up the next couple years. Okay. And they're really looking to keep their payment low to start with, so they're not you know, so stressed out. Okay. And then it will gradually go up. They'll know exactly how much it's gonna go up every year, and then it caps off that third year. So if you have kind of a younger person that's, you know, income should be going up, if the, the payment will go up the second year, they'll know how much it's going to go up and hopefully their income will go up at least that amount so it's not as, it's not that big of a deal. Awesome. 
And the only caveat to that is that we've seen this market before where buyers buy and get that type of loan and, you know, they tend to forget that they're in a 5-1, you know, kind of loan and then something happens and they're stuck with it and the payment starts to adjust right. and go up. So advice is, you know, if you're getting a 5-1, make sure that you remember that you're not in a 30-year mortgage. So be sure to try to refinance so they don't get caught up with you. Mm -hmm. All right. Arms are starting to make their way back, not as much as I thought they would because the rates aren't much different than a 30-year fixed rate loan. They're okay. very close, a little okay. bit lower, but not a whole lot less. Uh, what people would do is if they're sure, let's say they do a five-year loan, okay. five-year arm, one that's fixed for five years, and then starting the sixth year, it can go up based on what's called the index and a margin. I won't go into all that, but the sixth year, it can change. And usually it can't change more than 2% over what they had the first five years. Well, if someone knew that they weren't going to stay in the house more than five years because they were going to be transferred with their job or they were going to be looking to buy a larger home or so forth, why pay a premium to have their 30-year fixed rate locked in for 30 years when they only need five? Hmm. And they take advantage of the lower rate that way and save a bunch of money the first five years. So that's, that's the premise of an, an adjustable rate loan, is that why pay that premium when you only need it locked in for five because you probably won't have the loan after five years. Awesome. And even if you do, because of the savings the first five years, you could probably stay there and have the arm adjust up the maximum it can the sixth and seventh year, and then your payments will level off on what it would have been for the first seven years on the I fixed see. rate. You see, see what I mean? I see. So uh, one thing that I do up front is I take a lot of time fact-finding on what people are doing, mm -hmm. what's, what they're interested in, mm -hmm. uh, is it more important to get a lower rate? or get down payment assistance. Okay. We have all sorts of programs that help, help uh, first time home buyers or someone that hasn't owned a home in the last three years uh, with getting into the property with less money, lower payments, and, uh, and so it just depends on if they qualify for it. So I take a lot of time up front just figuring out what program's best for someone. Are they gonna stay there a long time? And by doing all that, uh, they can feel comfortable with the options that are best for them. Okay, awesome. awesome. One of the things that you, I, I picked up from what you just said, the first time home buyer, first time home buyer, if you haven't owned a home in the last three years, guys, you are, you are considered a first time home buyer. So if you own a home and you sold it four years ago, you sold it five years ago, you can come back in the market and you will be seen as a first time home buyer. Mm -hmm. And there are credits that you get. I mean, if you're buying instead of Maryland, um, your some of your transfer charges are waived are paid by the uh, by the state. All right. There are some programs that even though you've owned a home in the last five uh, three years, you still qualify for the program even though you've owned a home in the last three years. Uh, there are certain counties that have uh, targeted areas, and so if you're buying in a targeted area, mm -hmm. then you don't have to be a first time home buyer. And you don't have to be a, you don't have to, you could, you could have owned a home in the last three years. Oh, okay. okay. So, that's uh, again, that's what I figure out before. Let's figure out what their best need is and, and how we can uh, accomplish that. Okay. Awesome. Um, so, the last question that we have here that viewers are sent in is, um, I've filed bankruptcy um, before. Can I still buy? I haven't filed bankruptcy. Can I still buy a property with cloud? Will I get a mortgage with yes. my bankruptcy? Uh, depending upon the loan program, there are wait, uh, waiting time periods that you have to wait. Like for FHA, you have to wait a complete two years after your bankruptcy was discharged. If there is a house included in the bankruptcy, it's a three-year waiting period. Conventional is seven years. And uh, so, and uh, I believe VA is the same as FHA's guidelines. But oh. again, it just depends on what program you go with. Along with that, they like to see that you've reestablished good credit after your bankruptcy. Absolutely. And you need to have a certain credit score based on the program you're trying to apply for in order to qualify. But as far as the waiting period, it based, it's based on the program you're trying based to go the program. with. Okay. How about this, this and by is, if you guys asking, how about um, short sale? Mm -hmm. If I did a short sale, how long do I wait? If I'm doing FHA, how long do I have to wait after I've done it? Kind of depends sale? on the program too. It's very similar guidelines with like foreclosures. Okay. So it just depends on what program they go with. Okay. All right. So one of the other questions that they're asking here is, 
what the credit score do I need to buy a house? I mean, I have my credit score, the last time I looked at it was 600. I mean, do I need 640? What credit score can a buyer on entry level? Mm -hmm. You know, because not everybody's got 800 credit score. Right, right. You know, so we get that question all the time, and, and, and I would like for you to address that. Sure. So um, the credit score that they need to buy a home depends upon the um, type of loan that they're trying to get. Okay. Uh, one thing that we have at our disposal is what's called the What If Simulator, which is attached to our credit bureau. Okay. So I can go in, and if someone has, let's say, a 500 credit 550 credit score and they need 620 to get a mortgage loan. Mm -hmm. I can go in and figure out what they need to do, pay off bills, uh, pay down bills, add new credit, those kind of things, oh, wow. and put them on a roadmap to buy mm -hmm. a house. So they'll know what they need to do rather than just kind of winging it. Yep. And that's huge for people. So uh, this cre I, I probably 40% of my customers I rescore their credit to give them the ability to use certain programs and to get them better interest rates. Because awesome. the higher your uh, credit score is, the better interest rate you can get. So that's a very valuable tool that I have to help customers. Okay, awesome. So guys, you guys heard it now. If your credit score is not where you want it to be, you can come in. Uh, um, Steve here has got a program to help you, know, help you build your credit back up. Uh, using the what if simulator, right. correct? We don't charge any fee for that at all. Oh. We just tell them what they need to do because we look at it like in the long run we'll be able to help them buy a house and, and, and take advantage of so home ownership. So that's a no-brainer. That's a no-brainer. You know, you should stop renting, uh, not unless you love to throw money away, but if, if you don't love throwing money away and you're held bad because of your bad credit score, come on, guys. Um, you know, Steve is here to use the system to help you are free of charge. Free of charge. You're not being billed for that. And, 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 and thank you very much on behalf of uh, you know, all the people that are going to buy. Yeah. You know, and, um, That's what we're in the business for, is to help yeah. people buy houses. <laughs> all right. So that's it um, for today. Um, you know, we have, uh, we're very happy to have him in our studio. And if you guys have any questions, please go ahead and you know, text it in. 240-462-5679. Or you can go ahead and subscribe. Hit the subscribe button and uh, so you can get the notification once we have another video show up. All right. But until that time, um, thank you very much for thank coming Thank you for in. having me. And uh, keep in mind that Billy's an awesome realtor and he would be a good choice for you to work with. And don't forget that moving truck. You know, you know we had that moving truck I've that we give it, to yeah. buyers when they yeah. buy or sell with us. Right. And, um, you know, what are all the good things going, going here? So if you guys are looking to buy, looking to sell, uh, we'll be sure to direct you to one of the best mortgage lenders in the industry. Again, my name is Billy Okoye. I'm going to sign off at this point. Let's go get some house sold. Remember, whatever you do, you get it sold. All right? Talk to you guys next time.